Hi everybody, meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Thursday. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new, uh, glad to have you here. Enjoy the video. If you like me, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Absolutely free. Notifications when new videos come up. If you are a regular on my YouTube channel, welcome back as the list of regulars continues to grow and grow. And thank you for all the engagement. Uh, if I haven't gotten to your um, po if your uh, comment, I will do so shortly. So we have a f lot of things going on. First thing uh, I want to talk about uh, is uh, the fact that you know we've got in the east here this warm front that's struggling to get through. Uh, it is going to attempt to make it. It's already in the low 60s in parts of southern New Jersey. I'll try and get a little bit closer here. And uh, this time of year, the marine influence is very strong. The ocean water temperatures are, are, are barely near or just over 40. So it's, it's hard for warm fronts to come barreling through, uh, especially in the absence of any kind of intense storm to the west. So there's, the push isn't really there. It is going to make it, uh, I think, into southeastern Pennsylvania, at least through central New Jersey, might even warm its way up through north Jersey, uh, and then get pinned somewhere down here. So places in Long Island and southern New England uh, and southeastern areas of the Hudson Valley are going to have perhaps a tougher time, but there is a shot for record highs today, I, I think, uh, west of New York City and south. Uh, meanwhile, we have uh, the next storm that is developing out in the Midwest, and I will uh, show you the beautiful colors of winter weather advisories, winter storm watches, winter storm warnings up, and blizzard warnings up for northwestern Iowa and southern Minnesota. Uh, as the snowfall amounts are going to be in the one to two foot range. And the, the green and, and, and bluish shadings here, that those are the actual radar echoes. So snow uh, is beginning uh, to move into that area. So they're going to get uh, quite the snowstorm there. And out in the west, you know, we've been watching the threat for a major storm to come into California this weekend. That is now completely off the table. And I, I want to show you what's happened. You know, the European model showed this last night. It was the, uh, initially the first one to catch on to this idea. But basically, the upper low has sunk southward and is going to get left behind and just splinter. Rather than come in bodily into California, only pieces of it are going to impact the, uh, the state. We've got this one disturbance that's driving south-southeastward. You've got some tropical moisture that's feeding northeastward here. So... There'll be some rain and some snow in parts of California, but it's not going to be anything like uh, what the models were showing earlier. So that's great news uh, from that standpoint. And this change, by the way, in the West has led to an overall change in the uh, the beginnings of what I think is an overall long-term pattern change uh, as the trough in the West looks like it's going to disappear for a while. Uh, and that, and it, and it might be for more than just a few days. It may be for maybe a few weeks. So that would be even better news so that uh, the West can at least recover for a bit. But uh, here's our storm uh, on the Texas Oklahoma panhandle. Got some snows in. This is from, uh, this is for right now. And, and the radar echoes actually looks like the models might be a little bit behind in spreading that snow. But now when we get to, one o'clock this afternoon. It looks like it matches up pretty well uh, with the uh, radars. And there's the low uh, as it goes east of Kansas City into northwestern Missouri. The, the band of heavy snows in the darker blues. Looks like the model's a little further south with this, so it may be impacting areas further south in Wisconsin, uh, for example, among others. And then up it goes through Michigan. So this is going to be snow for Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan and then heads up to the northeast. And here we have a cold front that's going to be moving through on Saturday. Uh, so we've got another warm day coming up in the east on Friday. And on Saturday, when this front goes by, there is a marginal risk for severe weather. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center uh, from the National Weather Service puts uh, Pennsylvania, uh, New Jersey, and parts of New York, western New York, uh, and uh, areas also a little bit further south into Virginia and West Virginia into a marginal risk of severe weather. You'll notice out here in the west, uh, you don't have that big low coming through. You just have this disturbance that's driving southeastward and then some moisture from that southern feed that comes in on Monday into Southern California, but it's it's nothing like what it was. So great news 
uh, from that all the way around. Now I'm going to switch to the upper air because I want to show you what's going to be what appears to be happening now for the longer term. And not the models are all now on the idea. Here's that deep trough in the west uh, for early next week. We're just going to back this out just a little bit so we can bring it to the current day, uh, which is right about here. So you can see the troughing in the west. Uh, that one for Sunday, you see how it kind of just gets left behind out here? This is that upper air system. That This was the storm that was supposed to come crashing inland. It just basically gets left behind as it gets trapped underneath this upper ridge that's that's in the Gulf of Alaska. So that's that was a that was a good thing. One more trough late in the weekend, early next week in the into the west. And then after that, uh, as we move through later next week, a ridge begins to appear in the west. Actually, two things occur uh, as we look at the long range. You've got this ridge that starts to build up in the west, but you also have, and the GFS is a little more aggressive with this than the other models are, but they all have the same idea. There is a bit of a high, a closed upper high over Greenland, and what that's doing is it's forcing this vortex to be further south. Remember, this is like a, pu a pieces of a puzzle, uh, gears, when you put gears next to each other, you turn one and all of them turn, except that the gears are constantly changing in size and magnitude. Well, this upper high is acting as a gear to hold the vort a vortex in place and opening up a cold flow out of Canada. The question is the strength of this upper high and how much of this jet is going to be able to come down. The GFS is pretty aggressive uh, with bringing that jet stream down into the eastern part of the United States. The other models are a little less aggressive, but as we move through from day seven through day 10 and on through the long range, uh, it really has a very cold look in the east. And in fact, uh, here we have a very deep trough uh, that sets up uh, in, the, in the east later in the period and a strong ridge in the west. So this is a this is something that you know you look you look for in terms of a signature on the upper air as far as storminess is concerned, and carrying it through to the end of the period, you still have uh, at least at day 16, if this is right, some semblance of a ridge that wants to stay in the west and a cold flow into the northeast. Now, this I think would match up pretty well with what was uh, uh, my initial observation here a week or so ago, which is the fact that I think that there will be a window of opportunity in the east for cold and snow uh, sometime during uh, the early to mid part of the month of March. So I think this is playing into that uh, that 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 idea. So let's see if today's models hold form uh, and show the same thing. Because, you know, we do know that these things change and, and, you know, GFS especially has been guilty of this before. And then all of a sudden, uh, we'll suddenly come in and here comes a run and the trough is back in the west again. But um, one of the other things we look at are the, the measures of pressure changes in teleconnections. And, you know, this is uh, today's uh, run, the Pacific North America pattern, which measures the strength of the ridge in the west. And if the PNA is negative. Uh, then that ridge is non-existent. In fact, it's the extreme opposite with the deep trough this weekend, which we, we, we know is going to be there. But notice that it makes this rapid ascent from, from strongly off the wall negative to neutral in a very short period of time and then goes positive. So that huge change will indicate an upheaval in the atmosphere. So I'm looking at, you know, right around this date, which would be like March 5th to March 7th as a time frame possibility for something to happen in the east. At the same time, the models are reflecting the building pressures up near Greenland and points northward, which is forcing this vortex further south. So you can see that it goes from strongly positive to uh, negative to neutral around Mar March 1st and then goes strong negative uh, as we go into the March 5th to 7th time frame. So that is, to me, this the, if this combination is correct, uh, it might mean for some kind of uh, system that will dive down from the northwest and head uh, to perhaps the northern areas of the mid-Atlantic states or the northeast. I'm speculating here at this point. This is just, you know, open-minded, uh, free-flow thought speculation on my point. And by the way, I'm not qualifying, you know, when I talk about snow chances. When, when I say something, uh, those of you who have been here long enough know that, you know, 
If, if I'm going to tell you that there's a chance for a major snow, I will say major snow. If I think it's a minor snow, I will say minor snow. Right now, I'm being extremely general. Uh, you know, we could wind up with nothing through all of this. Um, it's just that uh, some people seem to think that uh, I'm not permitted to allow utter the word snow because my audience, they assume that my audience just isn't adult enough to understand what the word means. And I think that's ridiculous. These people actually tell me that I shouldn't be posting about weather at all on my weather page. Um, I should basically wait until after it's over and post. Uh, nonsense. Uh, beyond nonsense. So anyhow, uh, that was my rant for the day. So these are the teleconnections that we're looking at, which are suggestive of, of what the models were showing overnight and um, for to uh, and, and for this morning. Let's look at the NAM. We'll go to the NAM model so we can take a look at what this um, snow event for today, what it's doing, and we'll put up the precip for you. Okay, this is the new NAM from today, so we're going to back this up. Uh, computer's just a little tad slow today for some reason, but there's our storm coming out of the plains. You can see it here into the central plains across northern Missouri. You can see that large area of snow that moves up into the Midwest. The NAM is a little warmer than the GFS because it has an area of ice in there uh, in southeastern Wisconsin. And now here's where the low uh, starts to move up towards Sault Ste. Marie, and you get uh, this area of showers and thunderstorms that forms tomorrow on Saturday and moves on through it's it looks like a narrow line and then after that it just turns colder and drier in the east you've got another low that's getting ready to fire up uh, in uh, the Texas Oklahoma panhandle and here's that uh, moisture on the NAM uh, for later Sunday into Sunday night that <clears throat> begins to drop southward from the Pacific Northwest again not nearly as aggressive as uh, what uh, the uh, models were showing a couple of days ago, instead of bringing that California storm bodily inland, it's going to just remain locked out in the West, uh, in the Pacific Ocean, and not be of concern. And if there's a big ridge that winds up building in the Western states, it will never be a concern, and you will see uh, improving weather conditions uh, early beginning later next, middle part of next week and beyond. So great news for them. And uh, as far as the east is concerned, it's the ch uh, chance for record highs today. And again, tomorrow, some showers and storms on Saturday. And then next week, we're going to be going through the process of turning over to a colder pattern that will probably take us through the middle part of the month of March. So we'll leave it at that for today. Uh, check out the latest web posts on meteorologistjoechoffee.com, weatherlongisland.com, and Angry Ben has the New York City view on nycweathernow.com. And you can, of course, download my app and subscribe to my forecast for iPhones or Androids. Uh, 99 cents a month gives you uh, uh, twice daily updated forecasts and more when required for New York City, Long Island, New Jersey, Hudson Valley, Eastern Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. Each area has its own specific zone. So if you live in Connecticut, you get Connecticut. If you live in Eastern Pennsylvania, <coughs> you, get, you get it focused to Eastern Pennsylvania and so, so on. There's a card that shows up right up at the top over here, this corner, and you can link uh, to uh, the uh, Google Play or uh, the uh, or iTunes to download the app. The app download is free. Have a great day and a great Thursday. Be safe, and uh, we will uh, update this for you again tomorrow.